Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be a list of suggestions for if you want a witchy book. In some of these books the characters are actually referred to as witches and in some they just give off those vibes. If this makeup looks familiar and if there are books that aren't on this list that you think should be that I've included in recent wrap-ups, that's because I'm filming this at the end of July. Simply because I have plenty of books and I am planning for times ahead when I don't have enough time to make videos. Let's start with the witchlings. In this book, the little witchlings are actually referred to as witches and they form a coven and our three main characters are called spares because they didn't grouped it they didn't get grouped in with the groups of five that a normal coven has. They were left over, so they just got stuck in with um, the other rejects. So they get less powers and less rights in their society because of that. And so they go on kind of a quest to get some of their rights back and also protect their little town from this danger that is coming for them. And a big part of it is learning to work together because none of them chose to be in this coven together. They all just sort of end up together and have to make the best of it. Then we have Wild Seed Witch, which also has witch in the title, and this is about a bunch of young black girls who go to a etiquette and charm school that is also a magical school. This time our little character is a reject because she is a wild seed witch, which means she was raised by non-magical people, so she doesn't know all the rules and how the society of magical people works, so she gets in trouble for not knowing things she had no way of knowing, which is irritating. <sighs> and has a hard time making friends, but she finds some other people who don't fit in that well and makes friends with them. Then we have Boss Witch, which I read very recently, and um, it is a romance where a witch and a witch hunter fall in love, and it is a lot about the witch hunter figuring out that he is doing a bad thing by finding these witches and helping get their memories erased and their powers taken away, and we get to enjoy spending time with the witch main character's coven and their bonds are very important and there's also our main character is part of a whole family of witches and working out the family difficulties between them is a big part of the plot. Then Akata Witch is a series where we have a young witch who I believe was born in America and moved to Nigeria and she is a bit of a social reject. She has to be very careful and shade herself so that she doesn't um get sunburns a lot of the time or have too much sun in her eyes but she has magic and she finds a little group of other kids about her age who have magic and they learn all about their culture and the way their magic works from local people in a local magical society and it continues with Akata Warrior and Akata Woman which I need to still read Akata Woman but I really love them and I really love these characters. Then we have Mooncakes which is about a witch and her friend who is a werewolf and there is a local magic threatening their forest and their town and they have to work together to figure out what it is and they also work together with um, the witches grandmothers who are also witches and I really like seeing the old people and the young people working together and it's a very sweet story. Then we have the Love Sugar Magic series which um, is about a young girl and her family who have baking magic and the various foods, um, pastries that they make and the breads um, make people lucky or um, help them communicate with their dead relatives or um, help them be calm, all sorts of things like that. Um, and I really love the baking magic and I also love all of the stuff about family and how important family is and working things out with your family when you're having difficulties with them. And I thought the series really gets better as it goes on. I think they were like three stars, four stars, then five stars for the final book. So then there are a couple of Baba Yaga books, the first of which is a Wolf for a Spell, which at the moment I haven't completed reading, but probably by the time this comes out I will have. But this involves Baba Yaga talking to a wolf and a little girl and them kind of solving problems that are coming for the forest they all live in or next to together. And I've only read a few Baba Yaga stories, but I really have enjoyed all of them. The other one is Baba Yaga's Assistant. This one is about a girl who has heard lots of stories of Baba Yaga and so goes out to seek to be an assistant when I think one is advertised for. 
she uses all the stories about Baba Yaga to rescue some children who have fallen into her hands uh, and um, it's a lot about the value of stories and um, how they can apply to real life even if um, <laughs> you're not likely to meet a real Baba Yaga very often. Then there's garden spells which has kind of cooking and plant magic in it. Um, our main character bakes sweets and has a catering company and there is magic in the food that she makes and it is about that and about her reuniting with some of her family members protecting themselves from a threat that comes to town. Then there's Deep in Providence. This is uh, about three girls who try to talk to the ghosts of their dead friend because they miss her and some of them feel guilty about her death because they weren't as close as they would have liked to be and they do smaller magics in order to open up the world so that um, the veil is thinner and they will eventually be able to talk to this ghost but in the meantime that brings out other ghosts closer to the surface who are more like trying to get through and so it's very creepy <sighs> and um, very magical and slow paced and um, examines a lot of things very interestingly. Then we have root magic which isn't exactly witches but is magic that has a lot to do with nature and plants and herbs and also ghosts uh, who are called haints I believe and various mystical forces that are scary and also various um, regular world uh, mundane world forces that are coming after them and that they need to protect themselves with from with magic um, it's a bit creepy kind of creeped me out at some points but was also really um, had a lot of value of family stuff and was ultimately uplifting then the girl who drank the moon this is a girl who a witch fed the moon to in order to sustain her and then she has a little magic inside her and she meets I think an alligator who lives in the swamp who is magical and um, there's a nearby town that has problems and secrets and characters there kind of come together with this girl um, to solve problems. This one I have the hardest time remembering because it was very floaty and mystical and whimsical um, so it was a little harder to um, remember exactly how the um, plot specifically went. Then The Language of Thorns is a collection of I think five stories or six then multiple of them have witches in them they are uh, retellings. One in specifically has a witch that I'm thinking of is the Hansel and Gretel retelling that I really really liked. Then there's This Poison Heart which has a lot of plant magic in it as well. Then there's This Poison Heart which has a lot of plant magic in it as well and I just get very witchy, witchy vibes from the growing of the plants and making them into um, tonics and tinctures that are to help the people who live in the local town and um, kind of herbalist type work that makes me feel very, um, that gives me a lot of witchy vibes. Then there's The Ancient Mage's Bride which once again is a lot of vibes, it's a lot of dark creepiness. The main magic user is a magus rather than a witch, but um, a lot of the other stuff are going around and the magical creatures and the darkness of it just really give me a witchy vibe. And similarly with Wild Beauty, there are a lot of vibes of keeping your magic secret and it being plant magic and um, a lot of whimsy that makes me think witches. And then there are several that um, are set in kind of modern day-ish um, that have magic and that kind of give me a little bit of witchy vibes but more mm, just general magical vibes if you like magic set in current day um, and they also all three have kind of a um, magical school type setting so if you like magical schools here are some suggestions there's Legendborn um, which has a secret society of magical people and the main character is technically a high schooler but it's set at college and it really should have been a new adult book rather than a YA book but marketing is what it is I really really enjoyed it and it has a society of people who are like squires and pages and knights uh, based off of the round table and there's training and like 
stuff with weapons but also stuff training your magic and I really enjoyed that setting. Then we have the Marvelers which um, has our main character being a bit outcast at her school because she uses a type of magic that has been looked down upon and is seen as kind of criminal. Um, who is, and uh, people who use this type of magic have only just been admitted to this magical school and um, there's one teacher now at this magical school who uses her type of magic and is her aunt and she forms a little squad um, and they look into investigating creepy bad things that are happening at the school. Then there's Amari and the Knight Brothers which is um, less witchy again and more just magical. It is set at a summer camp rather than a school exactly but um, and there's less teaching than there should be and a lot of just self-study and the kids are like supposed to already know everything and they're just getting tested on it which is um, annoying and a little bit like Wild Seed Witch. Kind of did, kind of didn't see the end twist coming so that was very interesting. Um, and I really like that Amari is going to the school to try to get information about her missing brother. Okay, I remembered two more while I was grabbing the screenshots for this video. One of them is Grayling Song, which is a middle grade about a girl whose mother is a witch. And when her mother falls ill, she has to go on a quest to find other witches to help her figure out how to save her mother. And then there's the Witch Series, which is a graphic novel series about five teen girls with magical powers. Um, who are supposed to guard the veil between two worlds um, and there are bad guys coming from the other world and it gets more complicated than that as it goes on and I highly recommend it. So those are all of the witchy books that I want to recommend to you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!